McLaren Artura, part art, part future. That's the name. This is the car. Let's drive it. We'll get in right away by talking about the chassis it rides on. It's an all new carbon structure, which should make things extra stiff. It also doesn't hurt in the weight department. That's one of its biggest stories is how light McLaren have been able to get the Artura, about 3,300 pounds. Now, if you compare it to say the NSX, that weighs in at 3,800 pounds, also a hybrid. Um, so it definitely weighs a whole lot more, but for McLaren, it was really important for them to make this as lightweight as possible. But let's go back a sec because yes, in there I did say this is a hybrid and not just a hybrid, but a plug-in hybrid. Drivers will get 11 miles of pure EV range from a 7.4 kilowatt hour battery. An even more compelling number, 39 MPGE. That's way better than a lot of other normal person vehicles out there. So the battery takes about two and a half hours to fully charge with the plug. But if you don't want to plug it in, you don't have to because the engine can charge it completely. Switch it into comfort mode and the engine kicks in. You can set the regen to max using a stock on the steering wheel for when you want to go straight EV if you're getting close to home. The Artura gets a combined 671 horsepower and 530 pound-feet of torque. 577 of those horses come from an all-new longitudinally mounted dry sump twin turbo 3 liter V6. That's a first for the small company based in Woking, England. With all that lightness, that's a 0 to 60 time of 3 seconds and man. <laughs> that is a Toyota Echo being an idiot. <sighs> what a dummy. Yes, twin turbo could make some folks jittery, but with the torque fill from the electric motor, it's a non-issue, guys. Throttle response is super quick. Making acceleration, well, this thing hauls some butt. Because this is a hybrid, my assumption was going to be that when you got into the meaty part of driving, that that V6 was not really going to produce a great engine note. And honestly, I'm eating my words. I am 100% very pleasantly surprised. Um, it does have a great sound. It's a little bit throaty, um, maybe a little bit more higher pitched than a V8, but it's really not disappointing at all. Let's look at the exterior. By now, you know me. I prefer more reserve styling even when it comes to super or hyper cars. I love the proportion here, mid-engine as you can see, and I especially dig that the headlight design here almost looks like a McLaren logo. The dual exhaust rides in a great spot. It's got enough of the McLaren design language that it looks like an evolution from the 570. And that clamshell on the rear end of the car is one piece. McLaren calls the look of the Artura shrink-wrapped. But hey, you tell me what you think in the comments. Is it too subdued for a supercar? For anyone asking, the Artura is a rear wheel drive car only. There is no all wheel drive option. When you start the car, it automatically starts in E mode. So you turn it on and you really don't hear anything. You don't hear that amazing like crackling growling, which might benefit your neighbors at 6 a.m. when you're heading to cars and coffee. It's good to note that in pure EV mode, you have a speed limit of 81 miles an hour. Comfort mode, on the road, um, it honestly feels exactly what it says. It's very comfortable. Um, I don't feel like it's super jarring. Obviously, the higher up that you go, that you ratchet things, when you get to sport and then track, it definitely stiffens up the suspension. You really can feel a difference in those settings. However, even at the highest track setting, it feels really firm, it feels really composed and like it's really collected, but honestly, it is not like abrasive or jarring and it still is quite comfortable. McLaren was determined when they were designing this, even though it's dipping its toe into the hybrid space and the electrification space to keep this very much 
a driver's car as much as possible. They did that to me in two really significant ways. The first way is in the steering. They use electro hydraulic steering, not a pure electronic steering. And I'm really getting quite a bit of feedback from the road. It has great weight. It still feels incredibly precise, but more importantly, it actually feels like I am connected to the driving experience. And for a driver and enthusiast, I uh, really like that. The second way that they did that is with the brakes. These are not brake by wire brakes. These are mechanical brakes. So there is no like regen with the brakes. You do all of that actually through the engine. And I tell you the brake feel on the Artura is like these are natural brakes and man, there's just, there's nothing like it. There's a brand new multi-link suspension in the rear with proactive damping control to anticipate what's going on underneath you, help you with agility and stability. The Artura rides on Pirelli P0 Corsa tires. These were um, developed specifically for this car and they actually come with their own amount of sort of cyber tech, if you will. So if you are keeping track of your PSIs, which is really important if you're driving on the track, it is no longer regulated through this valve stem. Now what they're doing is putting a microchip into the rubber so that you can check your PSIs more quickly and be able to make those adjustments as needed depending on how you're driving. On the road, the Artura displays great manners with all of its hybrid quickness. My drive wasn't full of intense, twisty roads, but when I did encounter turns, I felt stability plus. Of course, I'm not driving the car anywhere close to its limit, but when I am pushing it, there is an effortlessness to it. From the steering to the balance and suspension, it's an easy car to drive quickly. Taking turns in the Artura genuinely feels pretty effortless. Um, I love the mid-engine weight distribution, of course, but when you combine like the steering and the stiffness of the chassis and uh, I mean everything, it just, it literally feels so effortless. Like I'm hardly doing anything and the car is just like putting itself exactly where it needs to be. I mean, there's so much control, so much composure. Honestly, this is really confidence inspiring. Absolutely fantastic. Let's talk about the transmission for a second. It's got eight gears, automatic dual clutch only, but those gears are all forward gears. That's one more than the outgoing V8 had on it, but the packaging is the same size, and that's because you reverse the car using the electric motor, which incidentally is the size of a brake rotor and weighs 34 pounds. In E-Mode, I do think that the transmission feels a bit clumsy, but once the engine kicks in, it's seamless when it comes to shifting. The way that the cockpit is set up is even more driver oriented than their previous cars. Everything is within reach. And interestingly enough, they don't ever put anything on the steering wheel, but your controls are right here, both for suspension settings and drive mode settings, as well as shifting from automatic to manual, which is right here. And then your traction control settings are right here. So everything is literally within hand's reach your digital gauge cluster moves with the steering wheel. So if you need to pull it closer, a little bit like I do, everything is front and center, very much immediate, exactly how you would want it when you're driving. It's got the switch gear that you need and not much that you don't. And what is here works efficiently without a lot of redundancy. You do get an eight inch touchscreen. I thought I would dislike the vertical orientation, but turns out it didn't bother me. It's just like my phone. Plus that volume knob placement is pretty brilliant. It's got built-in navigation with a system that's fairly intuitive, but better than anything else, it's got smartphone integration. The seats are carbon, uh, but don't let that fool you and make you think that A, they're fixed and that they're super uncomfortable. They're actually not. So McLaren has made these very adjustable. So for me, if I'm in a carbon, a fixed carbon seat, normally it's really not great for my proportions. This one is highly adjustable. They've also moved the controls for the adjustability up to the front. So you're not jamming your hand down between the seat and the door. Um, um, overall, I honestly think these seats are really comfortable. You don't have a lumbar adjustment, but there's so much support there that you don't even really feel like you need it. As for visibility, I really have no complaints. 
I look over my right shoulder, I look over my left shoulder, and I can really see pretty much everything. It's not your typical supercar, massive B-pillar issue. So, well done. While yes, this is still a supercar, McLaren did pay attention to their customers who were actually looking for a little bit more in the safety features, the ADAS uh, department. Um, so you will get things like lane departure warnings, an adaptive cruise control in the Artura. Um, those are options that you do have to pay for, but they're available if you want them. Another argument for using the Artura as a daily, you get six cubic feet of space in the front might hold some groceries, right? The Artura is definitely not a bargain proposition. Starting price is significantly over $200,000, but the good thing is it really does hold its value very well. We at Kelly Blue Book really do care about that. If you care about that with your car, you can go to the link above and check out what your car is worth. I'm guessing it's not gonna be over $200,000, but you never know. So we're driving on the track now and um, I'm really eager to see how this thing does. I, I have a feeling it's going to be pretty great. The one thing that we are going to try is something called variable drift control. That will allow you to set the angle of drift with some of the nannies sort of kind of off but in dynamic mode so not totally off. So I don't know, we'll see how, we'll see how I do. I might um, stink up the joint, so we'll see. So we're not gonna take a whole lot of speed into yeah. it, but look <laughs> right here. <laughs> I mean, you can definitely feel it getting a little bit sideways, um, but you can also feel the nannies kind of pulling it back in if you're a complete idiot like I am. The acceleration with that electric motor is so fast. And these brakes, oh, they are just rock solid. Because of the mid engine placement on this thing, um, man, going around turns is so, so fun. You basically feel like you're turning around the center point of this car. <laughs> I mean, listen, I, I guess the bottom line is, is this car is like stupid fun. Um, and certainly you can really do a lot in it. Um, and the nannies thankfully are gonna make sure that you don't get into too much trouble. I would like to spend another week with this car, but um, as far as balance and stability and grip and all of the things that you really want to inspire confidence on a track, um, I really feel like McLaren has dialed all of those things in really, really nicely. And thank you so much, Brad, for your genius instruction. <laughs> I'd be still out there without you. <laughs> We don't usually get an opportunity to drive supercars like the McLaren Artura, but if you subscribe to the KBB YouTube channel, you'll be able to see every time we do. If you're seriously in the market for a hybrid supercar, A, congratulations. B, you can also check out the Ferrari 296 GTB or the Acura NSX Type S. Those might come the closest. Technology, the environment, there are a lot of things that are forcing automakers to rethink the way we build cars and drive. And I am going to go on the record saying that I think the McLaren with the Artura have done a really beautiful job straddling the line between high tech and performance, but still giving the driver a great opportunity to drive the way that we sort of remember and used to drive. There's still a connection to the road. And I think with the Artura, they have absolutely nailed it. Well done. <laughs> Professional driver, closed course. Don't try this at home. I can't imagine what the look on my face is like. All right.